Preparing for College While Still in High School. Presented by Minnesota State Colleges and University staff, including Debbie Tillman, Director of the Office for Students with Disabilities at Normandale Community College. Sarah Lavala, Disability Director at Hennepin Technical College, Brooklyn Park. Jane Larson, Disability Services Consultant and former Director of Disability Services at Minneapolis Community and Technical College. For any high school student, the thought of transitioning from high school to college can cause anxiety about what the future may hold. Questions such as, am I ready for college? Will I make new friends? And am I going to get lost on a new campus? May fill one's mind in addition to other thoughts such as, how am I gonna pay for college? The information presented today, if implemented, will guide you through the transition process with the hopes that you will land in the post-secondary environment as prepared and informed as possible. Sarah, when do you think the transition process should begin? The transition process, making plans for the future, can be occurring throughout life, even while a young person is in kindergarten. But according to special education law, planning and thinking about the transition out of high school must be implemented with a special education student in the ninth grade. Who do you think can help students with the transition process? There are many people who can help high school students with the transition process. Families, for instance, can discuss various careers with their children and possibly line up a time for their son or daughter to go with them or another family member to work so that they can begin experiencing various jobs and careers. Your special education case manager knows a lot about using accommodations and teaching a student to be a self-advocate by discussing with their teachers what they need in school in order to be successful. And high school counselors have huge amounts of information about various colleges, both in and out of state, the college admission process, including standardized testing or placement tests, so they can be a valuable resource in the transition process too. You just mentioned a lot of information. How can a student know when to do what or even know where to start with the transition process? A resource guide has been developed alongside this webinar that has timelines and checklists. Students can work through the checklists with the support of their family and case manager to systematically, step by step, grade by grade, work through the transition process. Let's start with the freshman year of high school. The first activity for the freshman year is to start a graduation file. This file, or box, should be used throughout your high school experience so that all of your transition information is together in one place. Information put in this file would include school and extracurricular activities, volunteer involvements, work experiences, future plans and goals, and any other record or notes pertaining to transition. That step was easy, right? The next step is to learn about and understand why you are in special education. The reason why you are in special education is usually translated over to the post-secondary environment as a disability. Many students in special education have hidden disabilities, disabilities that you can't see by looking at a person, such as ADHD, psychological concerns, or a learning disability. Do you know why you are in special education? What are the accommodations that you need to use in your high school classes because of your disability? You don't have to tell everyone in your high school or college about your disability, but you do need to be able to describe your educational needs and the related accommodation that you find helpful. For instance, you may have ADHD. You are a person who gets easily distracted and school projects and tests take you longer to complete. You will most likely have the option to have your tests in the high school and at a college taken in a quiet environment with fewer distractions and with more time. To summarize your disability's ADHD, your educational concern is it takes you longer to process information. The fitting accommodation, you are given more time to complete tests in a quiet environment with fewer distractions. I've worked in the post-secondary environment for a long time and I've personally seen how important it is for students to know their disability, their educational needs, and the fitting accommodation. 
I also see how important it is for students to understand their strengths and weaknesses. Why do you say that? I work with students at a technical college, and as in all colleges, students should understand their strengths and weaknesses when choosing a major. For instance, HTC has an architectural technology program. Students who enter this program should have strengths in computers and math and should have interests in architectural design, construction technology, or interior design. So understanding what your strengths and weaknesses are will help you along your career path that will eventually involve choosing a college major. What activities should be included in this sophomore year? More information should be added in your graduation file, such as awards or recognitions, a list of hobbies or leisure activities, and immunization records. You should also be discussing with your case manager what should be included in your yearly IEP meetings. This will help in the process of thinking through your needed accommodations and practicing their use with your case manager and maybe even your teachers. During this process, more service providers may be requested to attend your IEP meetings. What service providers do you mean? Possibly a representative from vocational rehabilitation, social security, a mental health counselor, or a school or county social worker. You could also have a discussion with a counselor about college and career choices and the entrance exams they require as well as experiencing career exploration activities with your counselor, case manager, or family. What about building your resume? Being involved in school activities and volunteer experiences may help you earn a college scholarship because some college entrance applications place importance on these involvements. Make sure to include all this information in your graduation file. Now let's talk about the junior year of high school. What should students be doing? Juniors can be exploring college fairs that are usually offered each fall. During these fairs, students should be asking about admissions criteria, financial aid options, disability services available, and other resources on campus. In addition, students should also be involved in their IEP meetings that should include discussions about assistive technology, educational needs and accommodations, practicing self-advocacy, and ideas about career options. Juniors should also be narrowing their career choices and preparing and taking college entrance exams or taking a practice AccuPlacer test. The senior year is here. 12th graders should be completing college applications, taking or retaking standardized tests or the AccuPlacer exam, and learning about college financial aid options and college debt. These students should also be adding to their graduation files FAFSA and financial aid information, high school transcripts, and making sure they have a copy of their special education documentation, including their last IEP and last three-year evaluation. Seniors should also try to lead their IEP meetings and understand the differences between high school and college. They should also be trying to make their senior year of high school as much like college as possible. Why is that important? It is extremely important for a smooth transition process that students learn college ways while still having the supports of their high school case manager and family. Many students choose to go away to college and they need to be able to do nearly everything on their own. What would this look like for high school seniors? First of all, students need to have an organizational plan both for organizing assignments and classroom materials. College instructors will require assignments to be completed on time, so students need to be organized and manage their time effectively. This means putting in your planner when assignments are due, working on projects as soon as they are assigned, and not waiting till the last minute to complete assignments. The goal is to have work done on time, done well, without experiencing a lot of anxiety because of procrastination habits. What else should be implemented in the senior year? Students should be using accommodations as much as possible. Students should be using assistive technology that is needed, and most of all, students should try to take as challenging academic classes as possible through the high school experience to prepare for the level of work required at the college level.
We have mentioned quite a few terms. Let's review what they mean. Assistive technology is probably a term that everyone understands once they know what it is. All of the assistive technology mentioned on the slide is usually available at most colleges, but the ones that are used most by students are audiobooks and note-taking systems such as smart pens. Audiobooks allow students to have both the visual and auditory versions of the book, which can help many students with comprehension while reading any book, including a textbook. Smart pens are both a pen and a recorder. When used with specialized paper, the audio recording of the lecture correlates with the moment in time when that page of notes was taken. Students can listen to the lecture after class and fill in material that was missed. Other assistive technology of interest could be discussed with your case manager or mentioned at your IEP meeting. Do students have to take an entrance test to be admitted to your college, Sarah? Students do not have to take the ACT or SAT to be admitted to community or technical colleges in Minnesota. But most students need to take the AccuPlace or placement test before registering for courses at these schools. However, ACT or SAT scores are admission criteria for most four-year colleges and universities in the country. Do you suggest that students prepare before taking the ACT, SAT, or the AccuPlacer? Absolutely. There are online tools, books, and classes that can help students prepare for these tests. In addition, if you are a student with a disability, you should also make sure you request appropriate accommodations for the ACT or SAT, such as extra time or an individual room. The AccuPlacer exam is not timed, but additional accommodations are available. I would like to also mention that if students have lower scores on the ACT, SAT, or the AccuPlacer, they may have to begin their college coursework enrolled in pre-college level courses. So that is another reason why students should do their best and prepare sufficiently for these tests. So let's say I'm a senior in high school and I know I need financial aid assistance in order to attend college. What can be covered by financial aid? Financial aid can assist with college expenses, including tuition, fees, books, and even housing and food. What's my timeline for requesting aid? Seniors must complete their free application for student assistance, better known as FAFSA, before applying to specific colleges for financial aid. Most colleges suggest financial aid requests should be submitted by April 1st, before the fall semester of attending college in order to obtain the most aid. What do you know about financial aid debt? Financial aid comes in the form of loans, grants, and scholarships. Grants and scholarships do not have to be paid back, but all loans do after a student stops attending college or receiving aid. Students can acquire various amounts of loan debt, but they sometimes forget about the burden of paying the money back again. So students should understand this and talk to professionals about how to minimize debt. We have also talked about students having a career goal. What tools are available to assist students with this process? The Minnesota Career Fields, Clusters, and Pathways chart shows the foundation knowledge and skills that Minnesota will use for developing programs of study in career and technical education. Students will then be able to choose a program of study in order to attain the specific knowledge, skills, and abilities needed to pursue a career of their choice. What are the career fields? Business Management and Administration, Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources, Arts, Communication, and Information Systems, Engineering, Manufacturing, and Technology, health sciences technology, and lastly, human services. I think this document would be a very helpful one for students, case managers, and families to look at in our resource guide around the Minnesota Department of Education website when they are discussing career goals. What about another important term that we haven't fully discussed yet? Self-advocacy. We've mentioned self-advocacy throughout this webinar, and I think students sometimes get tired of hearing about this word, but until students are able to speak up for themselves, 
they will not be receiving the help that they may want or need. I totally agree. I have seen students wait too long to speak up for their need for accommodations, and then they don't do well in college. Sometimes all they needed was extra time on tests, but students have to take responsibility for their education and make a decision to self-advocate to the right person, which in this case means registering with the Disability Services Office at the college you are attending. This brings us to our last term, accommodations versus modifications. Why is it so important for students to know the difference between these two terms? An accommodation plan is what is implemented for students who are attending college, even though many modifications may have been listed on the IEP. It is important that high school students who have the goal of attending college understand the difference and adjust so they are ready for the transition to college. Can you give me an example of an accommodation versus a modification? Yes, a testing modification would be unlimited time to take a test and a testing accommodation would be extra time to take a test, such as time and a half or double time. What about you? Now is the time to start thinking about your career and life goals, even if you haven't started as a senior in high school. Any planning and work done before high school graduation will smooth the pathway to the next phase of your life. Thank you for joining us.